Hello and welcome to the print. Today I shall talk about issues regarding fencing of the Myanmar India border. Good fences make good neighbors is a thought immortalized in the poem Mending Wall by Robert Frost. This saying is also something we have been brought up to believe as it sets limits within a relationship and thereby prevents misunderstandings. However, Frost was being ironic suggesting that there was no need to have any fences at all when there is no cause of fear of wrongdoing but we all tend to do things the way they have always been done especially if there have been past successes irrespective of the present ground situation the recent announcement by home minister amit shah regarding the fencing of the 1643 km Myanmar India border has stirred up considerable debate is fencing indeed such a good idea or are we falling back on tried and tested formulas rather than trying out different solutions and like the neighbors in frost's poem india faces different security challenges with each of its neighbors these transnational security challenges including a range of issues ranging from illegal migration human trafficking the smuggling of drugs arms and animal parts and of course cross border terrorism fencing the border and regulating entry through well established checkpoints is a practical way to meet these concerns but there are other considerations that warrant attention to fencing a border can be a complex issue hinged upon various factors such as the location purpose and political climate while it can prevent illegal immigration smuggling and other security threats it can also lead to diplomatic tensions human rights violations and environmental damage the border roads organization is currently fencing the strategic india myanmar border starting with a 10 km stretch in manipur according to an article in the economic times the ministry of home affairs has identified around 1700 km of fencing that needs to be done with the next 80 km stretch in manipur already earmarked and the remaining 250 km of the manipur portion in the planning stage the decision to fence the india myanmar border has drawn opposition from several quarters including the kukizo communities of manipur and mizos of mizoram who share ethnic ties with the chin community of myanmar nagaland chief minister nephew rio has also spoken out against this proposal saying that the decision to fence the myanmar border cannot be taken unilaterally but only through discussions with all stakeholders there are complexities involved since people with shared ethnicities are staying on both sides of the border numerous villages have houses on one side and fields across the other side of this artificially created border the free move regime fmr which allowed people from india and myanmar to travel 16 kilometers into each other's territory without a visa was devised to deal with this piquant situation and the creation of a border fence will only add to the hardships of the local residents moreover the national socialist council of nagaland isaac nova or nscm im an insurgent nagaland based group that's currently in a ceasefire agreement with the government has vehemently opposed this proposal as have various mizo tribal bodies such as the indigenous tribal leaders forum it is important for the government to address the concerns of the local communities and take these into consideration before making any final decision one way to do this would be to hold public consultations and engage with the local communities to understand their concerns and perspectives and also explain the government's security imperatives this would help build trust and ensure that the decision making process is transparent 
and inclusive and it does not lead to any civil disturbances. Putting up a fence is easier said than done, especially given the rugged mountainous and forested terrain along the Myanmar-India border. Let alone roads, most places are inaccessible even by fair weather tracks. This is quite unlike the terrain on the Pakistan-India border, which is accessible by road, making construction of a border fence relatively easy. And even after a fence is put up, it only serves a useful purpose if it is kept under observation and patrolled throughout its length. Without the ability to react to any breach, a fence by itself is of little value. The cost factor also must be kept in mind. By conservative estimates, it costs almost 2 crore rupees per kilometer of fencing. For example, the government sanctioned fencing for approximately 3,326 kilometers of the 4,000 kilometer long India-Bangladesh border, the rest being riverine terrain, under two phases. Under phase one, an expenditure of 1,059 crore rupees was incurred for the construction of fences and roads. For phase two, the government has sanctioned the construction of 2,468.77 kilometers of fence and 1,512.68 kilometers of roads at an estimated cost of 4,393.69 crore rupees. By the same yardstick, the fencing of the 1,643 kilometer long Myanmar-India border could easily cost up to 3,200 crore rupees, if not more, given the difficulties of terrain and weather. Maintaining the fence year after year is also a recurring cost that will strain an already overstretched revenue budget. Therefore, a thorough cost-benefit analysis is needed before such an ambitious project is undertaken. On the Pakistan border, where the threat of state-sponsored terrorism is high, or on the Bangladesh border, where the challenge lies in population migration, such an investment is perhaps justified. However, on the Myanmar border, where the population is sparse and the threat of terrorism low, this proposal needs to be revisited. In any case, traditional fencing is now becoming increasingly obsolete as anti-national elements are now making full use of technologies such as tunneling and drones to bypass physical barriers. An alternative solution could involve bamboo fencing and smart fences which are more environmental friendly and less intrusive than traditional border fencing. For example, Bambusa bambos, a species of relatively fast-growing bamboo, is a thorny, thick and sturdy plant that could act as a tough, all-weather and maintenance-free living fence, effective even against raiding wild elephants. It could be planted all along the border as a low-cost alternative without alienating the local population. This, coupled with the use of sensors at critical locations to detect and give early warning of intrusions would be a more cost-effective solution. There is no doubt that as a nation, we need to secure our borders against transnational threats. However, any proposal that alienates the local community will only further vitiate the already fragile law and order situation in our border areas. Therefore, we need to find better ways to secure our borders by leveraging technology and through out-of-the-box thinking. This is General Naravne for the print.